Whakapari. I call the Honourable Nanaia Mahuta. Koutou ke ngā mana o Taraua, koutou ke ngā mana o Manukorihi, koutou ke ngā mana o Te Ati Awangauri Whakaheke e Pupuru ngā taumi i Waihotea a tātou nei mātua tūpuna, tēnei katua ki te mihi atu ki a koutou. Tatua tira ki ngā kaihautu o ngā kaunihira arohe, e arahi tēnei o ngā kaupapa, tēnā tātou katoa. Madam Speaker, I rise to take a call in a significant bill. That is a local bill. But you would think by listening to all the contributions, we're doing something a little bit more and a little bit more special uh, today. Jonathan, uh, the accolades around stewarding through uh, a very difficult issue across the House, I think is something that one would want to have uh, as a positive reflection uh, in service to uh, Parliament, but also uh, to an electorate, and I acknowledge you for that. Madam Speaker, in the preamble, uh, uh, to the bill, there is a statement that really, in my mind, sets the context for what is being achieved here. And I'll read it uh, from the preamble as it's stated. In the words of the Whakatauki written by Fiti Te Rangitake to the Chief Land Purchase Commissioner in 1859, Ko e e mātou ki a manu o te moana e noho ana i runga i te kōwhatu. Ka pari te tai ka ngaro mea taua, taua kōwhatu e te moana. Ka rere ngā manu no te mea ka rehe nohoanga mō rātou. And translated it reads, These lands will not be given to us into the governors and your hands, lest we re resemble the seabirds which perch upon a rock when the tide flows, the rock is covered by the sea, and the birds take flight for they have no resting place. Madam Speaker, uh, that was an insertion of a part of a context of history that has been well spoken about across the House today, but sets, I think, a nice uh, uh, sense of purpose as to what's being trying to, what we're trying to achieve through a very difficult circumstance of history, but rectifying uh, a challenge space that has been very hard to deal with, which is freeholding leasehold lands. But in doing so, it was evident through the first reading and the select committee process that unless we tried to do something a little bit more to address the significant historical issues that have already been referred to, which are the first confiscated lands at Pekka Pekka, we may create more harm than good. So while much of uh, our contribution sounds like a treaty settlement, it isn't. And for that reason, I want to acknowledge albeit a very difficult journey uh, for the conversations across the District of New Plymouth, District Council, as well as Taranaki Regional Council. The path to reconciliation requires continual effort and commitment to do the right thing. And for New Zealand, it's a long road. And for New Zealand, albeit through a treaty settlement process, we have a way to try and move in the right direction. It's still a long road. This is a local bill. And I can remember when I came into this house as a very fresh, uh, fresh-eyed MP, if you like, uh, my electorate extended down uh, into, uh, actually as far as uh, Te Tai Hauaru into uh, Whanganui. But one of the people who stewarded me, stewarded me through my parliamentary um, uh, career around understanding uh, the other side of the picture and uh, the what happened in Taranaki, because I grew up very much understanding the Māori historical context, was a former colleague who's here in the house, Harry Deinhoven. In fact, we, did a num we uh, had a number of clinics and visits uh, into the Waitara area, and even at that early time, I knew that we needed to show much more commitment uh, as a country, but also as local MPs, into the way in which the Waitara community could thrive and sustain itself. Uh, Harry, I'm glad that you're here to witness something significant as well, and I know you've had a hand in some of that. Um, Madam, Madam Speaker, there are aspects of the bill that have been well commented on, but really, if I was to uh, tie everything up into a nutshell, it's around the ability to ensure that across the catchment, there will be a significant opportunity to contribute to the well-being of uh, the health of the Waitara River catchment. And that's significant from a, an environmental point, point of view. From a community point of view, the ability to ensure 
uh, that funds go to the Waitara community, of which both Otarawa and Manukore here are a part of, will see in time uh, a, contri a contribution to di directly into the community around the regeneration of Waitara, and that's been commented on. But significantly what it delivers, and it is an opportunity, and it isn't uh, everything, but it's something for the hapū of Otarawa and Manukore here. It secures and anchors a footprint of hapū who belong there to actually have more of a say about how their community evolves and goes forward. It's an opportunity. This has been a really difficult uh, path uh, for those who have really worked alongside Nashua to negotiate, in many respects, some very um, uh, some innovations into a local bill that we wouldn't see otherwise. Some innovations into a bill that we wouldn't see otherwise. To the, to the Manukorehi people, Patsy, Patsy Bodger, Matafaturua, White and Moana Dennis, I acknowledge you. I acknowledge the work that you've done. To Otaraua, Rawiri Dorba, Donna Erewiti and Alice Dorba, I acknowledge you. To the, to the communities that have come together to try and ensure that you've been kept abreast of what's being achieved here, I acknowledge all of you and I acknowledge that while it doesn't go the full, to the full extent of your aspiration, it does uh, create an opportunity to work forward. But here's the thing. What this will secure and anchor to the, to the hapū uh, of Otarawa and Manukorehi, and in time, we would hope, alongside uh, their other uh, whānau of Te Atiawa, is to secure the history to the community of Waitara in a way that tells the story and balances up the, the way in which New Zealand recognises what actually happened in Waitara and on the Pekapeka Peka block. I'll leave one last uh, comment, really, uh, and it is to the acknowledgements of Nashua. Uh, the innovations in this local bill would not have been as they are were it not for the treaty settlement experience that you brought to the table, but more importantly, the listening heart to the people of the hapū of Otaroa and Manukorehi, because we have seen, again, captured within the context of this bill, the types of innovations that happen in treaty settlements, but not in local government legislation. I had many a meeting with the councillors, uh, the mayor and, and, and the Taranaki Regional Council about aspects of this bill that I was trying to nudge along. One last comment. There is an aspect of the bill. Should we uh, move continually down a path of reconciliation with a, with a mind to do something more? The nature of the Hapu Land Fund being a perpetual land fund is something that should be revisited because if we want to ensure that the hapu continue to be a presence that can sustain itself and its contribution to the heart and soul of the way in which Waitara develops, that may be an area that we look to for the future. Madam Chair, I've taken up more time than I need to, but I want to acknowledge this hasn't been an easy path. Every person sitting a group represented in, in the House today have really got many, many stories to, to tell. Briar, uh, from a, uh, a drafting point of view, I know that you work tirelessly to make sure we, we sh um, shape the words of the, uh, and the intent of the bill in the way that it was uh, uh, going to ensure and give assurance to all the parties that are represented here. So we've done something right. Nō reira he, te tāku, kia tui tui ki ngā kōrero a mō tēnei kaupapa, Jonathan. <coughs> Madam Speaker, I call Marama Davidson. Tina koe ete manga i o te whare ki a koutou o Otarawa manukorehi te ati awa hoki. Kia ora tato katoa. Um, oh, my discomfort in standing here today is in trying to balance the mana of all of the hapu and all of the